Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the topic of STEMI and today we are speaking about an interesting lecture regarding RV infarction. I know of course that you have spoken in RV infarction literally inside the lecture of ECG in STEMI but what I wanted is that to dedicate a specific lecture for this topic because it's a very important topic and easily missed in our clinical practice. So our ILOs today are to understand how to diagnose RV infarction in ECG and to learn how to perform right ECG leads accurately. First of all, why is it important to diagnose RV infarction? RV infarction is a famous cause of shock in STEMI patients as it can result in reduced venous return and to reduce ventricular filling of the left side and this result in reduced stroke volume and cardiac outputs that can result in cardiogenic shock. So of course RV infarction is very important to diagnose because it can cause cardiogenic shock and increase mortality. The second thing is that it can be treated by giving IV fluids because RV is preload dependent chamber and of course it's very essential to avoid nitrates because nitrates cause venous dilatation and so reducing the venous return to the right vent ventricle aggravating the RV failure and the shock and so it's very important to diagnose RV infarction in order to give IV fluids avoid nitrates till revascularization is achieved of course RV infarction is a famous clinical triad of hypertension and clear lungs as there is no pulmonary venous congestion in this case because of reduced cardiac output of the right side to the left side and of course because of the RV failure there are distant leg veins. This is a famous triad. Although normal blood pressure may also be present in some cases, not all patients with RV infarction will be shocked but of course it can result easily into hypertension and cardiogenic shock. Usually RV infarction occurs with inferior STEMI if the RV RCA occlusion occurs before the RV branch and it can be diagnosed by ECG or by echocardiography because echocardiography can show the right ventricle and helps us to assess the RV function but here of course because we are in the ECG course we are speaking and focusing on the ECG only let's see this diagram here we can see the water and we can see the left main bifurcating into LED LCX and we can see here the RCA which gives the RV branch nearly at the mid-segment in order to supply the RV. And we can see here the nomenclature for the different chambers of the heart according to the anatomical orientation, which is showed by the coronary arteries on the AV groove and interventricular groove. So here we have the LD, RCA, and we can see the RV branch. The problem occurs when there is a thrombus occluding the RCA before the RV branch, and so there is insufficient blood supply to the right ventricle, resulting in RV infarction and so RV infarction occurs if the RCA is occluded proximal to the RV branch whereas if the occlusion is distal to the origin of RV branch RV infarction usually doesn't occur in this case. Let's discuss now what are the ECG signs for RV infarction. We are speaking here in this lecture about three famous ECG signs to diagnose RV infarction. The first one which is the gold standard is the ST elevation in the right precordial ECG leads. The second thing is the magnitude of ST elevation in lead 3 more than in lead 2. And the third one is ST elevation in V1 more than 2 mm. Let's check the first one. The first one is the right ECG leads. And let's mention here how to arrange for right ECG leads or how to put them. Of course, the classical way is a mirror image to the standard left side of precordial leads. So we put V1 on the left force intercostal space to the left side of the sternum. V2 would be on the right side of the sternum, also in the force space. V3, as we know, is midway between V2 and V4, as V4 is in the right fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. Then V5 would be at the anterior DA line on the right side and V6 is on the mid axillary line. So the right ECG lead is just a mirror image to the standard left sided ECG leads as we can see here in this image. Is there another easier way? Yes, of course, there is another easier and simpler way because of course, right ECG leads usually follow the standard 12 lead ECG. So for example, the nurse is performing two ECGs for the patient, one with the standard way and the other one with the right ECG arrangement. So we can leave here the standard ECG precordial leads in the same position. But just we move V4 to the right side, and so it would be V4 right. And then we can move also V3, we can move V5, we can move V6 in order to have 
V1 and V2 at the same standard position, but v from V3 to V6 right precordial leads would be on the mirror image side. So here it is just a simpler way in order to put the right ECG leads but not the whole six precordial leads. The most important one of them is V4 right side. This is the gold standard right precordial ECG leads in order to diagnose RV fortune. Let's see this ECG example here. We can see here that V3 to V6 were put on the right side. And we can notice that the R wave progression is not normal and not preserved in the normal way in this example. As we can see here, that there is about QS pattern in V3 to V6. And this most probably suggests that the ECG leads from V3 to V6 were put on the right side of the chest rather than the standard left side. And so these are right precordial ECG leads. And we can see here that there is about 1 mm ST elevation apparent in V3, 4, 5, and 6. And so this can be used as a diagnosis for RV infarction in this case. Of course, there is a much, much simpler way in order to put right ECG leads, which is just move V4 to the right fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line and leaving the other five precordial leads on the same standard position on the left side of the chest. Because V4 is the most important and most accurate lead to diagnose RV infarction, as it has 88% sensitivity and 78% specificity in the diagnosis of RV infarction. So V4 right ECG lead is the most important one to diagnose RV infarction and should be the gold standard, but of course it is important to put it in the correct anatomical position. Let's see this example here. We can see here that there is ST elevation in the inferior leads, of course conclusive for inferior STEMI, associated with the reciprocal depression in 1 and AVL, but also we can see here that V4 on the right side shows ST elevation is about 2 mm, and so here the only lead from the precordial leads which was moved to the right side was V4, and it helped us to diagnose RV infarction. So, of course, right precordial ECG leads are the gold standard to diagnose RV infarction, and the most important one is right V4. Let's move to the second item in diagnosis of RV infarction. We can see here that we have ST elevation in lead 2 and lead 3, and of course also in AVF, and there is reciprocal depression 1 EPL. But if we compared ST elevation in lead 3 to lead 2, we could notice easily that ST elevation in lead 3 is much higher than ST elevation in lead 2, as it is about 2 or 3 mm in lead 3 and it's just 1 mm in lead 2. So why the magnitude of ST elevation in lead 3 is much more than in lead 2? It is easy to understand. As we know the arrangement of the limb leads here from the Eindhoven triangle that we learned from the lecture of basics of ECG, we can see here that if we put another diagram for the heart here, we can say that lead 3 is much directed toward the RV and so its positive pole is directed towards the RV apex and so if there is RV infarction, it can show ST elevation in lead 3 much more than in lead 2 because lead 2 is away from the right ventricle. It is directed much more towards the inferior wall of the left ventricle, but lead 3 is directed more towards the right ventricle. And so as the positive pole of lead 3 is directed towards the RV rather than that of lead 2, then ST elevation in lead 3 of course would be much higher than ST elevation in lead 2 in case of RV infarction. So as we can see here in this ECG example, we can see that SC elevation in lead 3 is much higher than in lead 2. And so this is the second ECG feature that can be used to diagnose RV infarction, is to compare the magnitude of ST elevation in lead 3 to that in lead 2. Let's move now to the third feature in diagnosis of RV infarction, which is the ST elevation in V1. We can notice here easily that as we have inferior STEMI, in lead 2, 3 AVF associated with the reciprocal depression in 1 and AVL. Also, we can notice that there is ST elevation in V1 of about 2 mm. So why is there ST elevation here of 2 mm magnitude and also there is pathological Q wave in V1? What's the relation between V1 and inferior STEMI or RV infarction? Let's see this diagram here which we used before in the lecture of chamber enlargement and lecture of down the branch block. We can see here that V1 is facing the anterior wall of right ventricle. 
And so in case of transmural infarction of V1, it would show a ST elevation in V1 because it is facing the positive pole of V1, resulting in ST elevation in V1 plus minus in V2. And so the presence of ST elevation of more than 2 mm in V1 indicates transmural MI of the anterior wall of RV, which is of course very common to occur in inferior STEMI. And absence of ST elevation in the other people to lead rollout at your MI. So whenever you see ST elevation in V1 with inferior STEMI, plus minus also in V2, don't say that this patient has combined anterior and inferior STEMI. No, it is just a sign of RV infarction. So we can see here in this example that we have ST elevation in inferior leads, and of course it is much higher in lead 3 than in lead 2. And also we can see that there is ST elevation in V1 and V2, but not present in the other leads. And so this is a sign of RV infarction rather than anterior STEMI combined with the inferior STEMI. What about lead V2? Does V2 show the same or not? If V2 may show ST elevation, may be isoelectric or may show ST depression. And this depends according to its orientation to the RV surface, which is variable between individuals. For example, if V2 is directed toward the anterior wall of RV as in V1, so it would show ST elevation. But if it is away from it, it can show ST depression or it may show just isoelectric ST segment. So for example, in this ECG example, we can see here that the patient of course has inferior STEMI with reciprocal depression 1 AVL and there is only ST elevation in V1 and slight ST depression in V2. And so this is a sign of RV infarction and presence of ST depression here is not a sign of posterior STEMI because of course there is no long R wave here in V2 in order to say that it is N4 posterior STEMI. No, it is just inferior STEMI with RV infarction. In this example, we can see that there is ST elevation in inferior leads with reciprocal depression 1 and APL. The ST segment is depressed in V2, but it is isoelectric in V1. So also, it is a sign of RV infarction. It is not N4 posterior STEMI because as we see here, R wave is small in V2. So, to summarize the ECG signs of RV infarction, we have the ST elevation in right precordial ECG leads, especially lead V4 right side. We have the magnitude of ST elevation in lead 3 more than in lead 2. And we have ST elevation in V1 more than 2 mm, plus minus also in V2. So, at the end of our lecture, we understood today how to diagnose RV infarction in ECG and how to perform right precordial ECG leads. And our take home message today. Lead V4 on the right side is the most accurate right ECG lead in the diagnosis of RV infarction and also ST elevation in V1 plus minus V2 with inferior STEMI signifies RV infarction, not combined anterior STEMI. Thank you very much for your watching.